there and welcome. My name's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee and today I am making a spider. Okay, I know. Yes, one of my friends is mad about them. Um, I can't see it myself but here we go. So I've got a pair of knitted tights here. Now the key to tights is not to stuff them too much and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two antennas and then I'm going to make the most use of this fabric that I can. So the legs are going to be quite short by the end of it. Um, if I'd have gone out and bought the stuff, then maybe I'd have bought two pairs of tights. But I do tend to like to do what I've got left over. Now the face is going to be with a multitude of eyes. Now spiders, they don't have a set number of eyes. Some of them have sort of one and some of them have three and some of them just have two but I've got quite a lot of these little cat's eyes so I thought they would be brilliant to do a multitude eye so you know like a big a big 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 one so I'm going to make the face by cutting three panels so that it's square and then I can put the eyes on the front the body again is three panels and I'm going to put four legs on each side. Now I don't know if I'm going to put two tweezers, um, yeah I'm not 100% sure about that and then the body is just two panels and it's like a proboscis. So it's this is so it's all about turning inside out, it really is. So from the side it would look one, two, three, and then all these legs and all these eyes, okay? So yes, and hopefully she'll love it. So yes. Now panels, um, you'll see me so, you know, there's only so many variations you can do with soft toys. Most of the time it is you cut out the side and then you either panel along the top in a strip or you can panel along without it. Um, yeah, so this needs to match up here but not necessarily as long. And then the same length this does need to be. So this is my body. There we go. And then I can put this back in the scrap pile and I'm sure I'll find a use for it. I really will. Now the best place to start is always to do the bits and then sew the bits together. So let's chop these. I'm not going to do tweezy bits. <sighs> now the way I'm going to get the knee to bend in the end is I'm going to do a little stitch at the knee joint and this is just to give it a little bend. Now what I need to do with these is just sew up the ends now so they need to be turned inside out and what we're going to do is line them as flat as possible we want to make use of as much cloth as we can and then just literally sew a loop now obviously tights are stretch fabric so what's happening is the machine is stretching it whilst it's sewing this is fine no, this is fine. Um, what you do need to, to make sure is it's actually stitching at the back and you're not just stretching your bobbin thread. So, one done. Eight to go. Okay. 
I can come back to them because that's all I'm literally going to do. I'm going to sew an arc over the top of each one. Uh, let's get... This is the tail and it literally is... A sort of teardrop shape, a fat teardrop. this way round for now. Now my little face, so I'm going to sew the two halves together. And then I'm going to sew the two halves right side to right side, just round this circle, so nice and easy, and then I've got the flat exit there, so if I just do that, now, unless you're following a pattern, the pattern, then um, we have to be careful that we've um, got the add-on bit not too big and not too small so if it does look complicated then sew it in two halves so the top from the base and then go around the other side okay so managed to unthread my machine through all of that oh who'd believe it Now, um, I know for keen-eyed people, I'm sewing it in brown thread. When you're sewing with black thread, you often find that the dye is stronger and it makes your blacks look dull. So if you sew with a dark colour rather than a black, then you can usually get away with it. So I'm sewing with a very dark brown and that means that any stitches that are seen they won't sort of unblacken my black. Yeah, because black's quite a hard colour to dye, apparently. Alrighty. So let me just get the eyes on the face and then I can literally catch up on my sewing and then we can um, sew it all together. So yeah, what I'm doing for the last half of the head is allowing the machine to take it, but I'm holding it at the end, so it's all good. This fabric fur has got quite a lot of stretch to it, and it does sort of push itself out when it's sewing. And with um, soft toys in particular, the bigger they are, the easier, because it, it can really get quite fiddly, you know? Like you, you don't realise how fiddly it is. So that's my two triangles, although they're soft triangles, and sewn together. So yes, I haven't made a decision about the eyes. Um, I think five. Should we go with five? Five's good. Now with sharp scissors what I'm doing is I'm starting the hole. You don't want the hole big enough to um, actually the washer to pop out and 
yeah, you, you, you want it just easily. These ones haven't got a sharp point. Um, so. Sorry, I'm just trying to get a washer out. Yeah, and I suppose if you do come across something like this, um, either from your own stash that you didn't know you had, or from buying a job lot of old craft supplies, um, yeah, I suppose, you know, don't don't deliberately waste them, but, um, you know, do, do allow them to inspire you, because, I don't know. Maybe I'll make a quilt out of loads of cat's eyes. Okay, I'm doing this really badly. It's almost like I'm rushing here. And um, that's not the idea at all. So what I'm doing is pushing them through the fabric and then I'm pushing the ends through the washers. And some of these washers seem a bit easier than others. Yeah, what I suppose I should do is I suppose I should throw them away if I can't get them started. So. Yeah, I will throw it away. Yeah, that mug over there that I just chucked it in, that is um, all my broken needles because I don't want... What I tend to do is I have a couple of bins on the floor and um, it's big scraps and little scraps and so if I chucked a broken needle in there or something like that then and I went for a dig because I just needed a little bit of cloth just to start the sewing machine or something then you know I would get that needle under my nail. Okay so I've done five and Always the case when you're sort of designing stuff yourself. Have a little look, see what you think, really. Um, probably too close to the camera to get any light on it, but yeah, there we go. So that's my head finished, and I'm going to keep it that way round. So it does get a bit... Um, yes, this is my other mug, which is empty. <laughs> I didn't think this through. There we go. I have got loads on the floor as well, so. There we go. Got rid of that. All right, so sewing I need to do. I can sew the top seam of this together. But I'm going to leave the bottom seam because I'm going to insert all my legs. can do for now till I've done my legs and all that is is I've sewn along the top of the body when I sew in the base I'm gonna insert loads of legs hi welcome back <laughs> I got myself in a bit of panic actually I put the sewn ends uh, you know the original ends of the tights down the side here because I thought well I don't need to cut them and I don't need to sew them so then I was going, oh no, I've only got six legs. Oh. Not that I think it would matter. And I think in a way, if you used less legs, then it would probably look more dramatic. A bit like cartoon drawers. And they only give everyone three fingers because four fingers looks like a bunch of bananas. So here we are again. We have the middle. Okay, the middle. Right side to right side, I'm going to put a couple of stitches in. Now, I did think about sewing up the knee joints whilst I was off camera, but then I thought it just makes it a bit more complicated that I have to make sure that they're all facing the right way. So here I've got a leg. 
and I'm going to leave my needle down, lift my foot and place my leg under the foot. I'm going to make sure that I've got both of these loose ends and then I'm going to sew. So I'm probably about a third of the way along. I'm going to leave my needle down and I am going to put my next leg in. So you can see that there's going to be quite an overlap. This is because the body, the middle body, is quite small and the legs squashed quite flat. So I'm sewing another third. Um, now I have probably still the first bit, the first leg, and I'm going to put the, four, the third leg in. Now as I haven't stuffed them, stuffed, stuffed, um, they shouldn't push the sewing machine out too much, but that is a consideration, so, lovely, just coming up onto my last leg now, and I'm just going to sew another one in. Now they are slightly different in length, um, I'm not worrying, I refuse to worry. So that's my fourth leg on this side sewn in. So I have my bottom, my bottom. I'm going to turn it inside out. And okay, you're going to get to a point where there's too much sewn in this bottom bit, this middle bit. So it's really up to you whether you make the tail end bigger or you make so that you because sooner or later you're going to have to sew these on together so what I'm doing is loosely stuffing my tail end um, this is the stuffing that I'm going to end with and I'm going to leave my needle down I'm going to lift my foot and I'm going to place this in the middle so this is why I'm saying you know don't overstuff it you want it nice and loose and um, yeah, be warned, you now have got another four legs to sew in. Now, if it gets too big, we could either put the tail in at a later date, that would work, or we could put all the legs, all the middle body inside the tail and sew. Or we could just hand sew it. So now I'm going over four layers of fabric which includes a seam in the middle and the seams on the outside. So if it does get too much for the machine, then um, yeah, we have to stop and think. So I'm just checking I'm going the right way. Yes, it is a bit like that with sewing fabric, fur fabric, but you can, you know, just end up going the wrong way. Now whenever I sew fur, I always, at the end of a line, I'll turn it over and I'll have a look to see that everything's in. Um, sometimes you end up and you're just sewing the fluff along the side. So, Okay, so I've now got to get these two to join up at the end. This is the end of my body and I've got to get my four legs in. So I can either hand sew, machine sew, brute strength is what I'm going for and um, yeah if I only sew, sew two stitches at a time I only sew two stitches at a time. Now I suppose it takes confidence to do this what I'm doing is literally pulling it from the back and um, on my first machine, my Singer machine that was, I think it was, it was a black one the light was here, so, you know, that's why I, I, I've got used to not sewing with a light. And, um, yeah, because of that. Because I've burnt myself. 
Okay, so then again, up, needle down. Have a good wiggle, a good pull around. And remember that we have to turn this inside out as well. A little bit of stirring. Needle down, foot up. And yes, <laughs> make sure that you don't hide one of the legs from yourself. Okay, so let's put that one down there. Pull this over. Tuck that in. my last one and what I'm hoping to do is I'm hoping to just do a couple of stitches with just the fur um, this is just going to be make it much easier for the next stage When you are pulling fabric, make sure you don't pull it so that you actually bend the needle. Um, sometimes that happens. Um, it always makes me jump and um, it's just not good. So I'm just coming up to the end now, being a bit more gentle with it. It's like it's given me a warning shot. And there we are. So I need to re-thread my machine. Okay, so I'm just going to pick it up where it broke. I'm not going to stop the camera because it just means that I've got editing to do. Alrighty, so we're just coming over the last stitches. Keeping a close eye that the needle is actually hitting the right spot. And so that's all sewn in, which is excellent, and you can um, just adjust it if there's a bit that's not sewn in. Um, yeah. I am. Um, I find it a lot. I suppose that's why I do check the sh the seams. I assume when I'm doing a lot of layers like this that I might miss a layer. And there's nothing wrong with reinforcing these seams. Now, when you are inserting something, if my legs were slightly longer, what I'd be doing is I'd have them sticking out so that. Um, I didn't need them in the centre, because I, I don't need them in there, I just, yeah, so I'm putting them through the hole there. Right, I'm just going over this last seam. Turning inside out, always a bit tricky, and we just take it slow. It's usually best not to get too much in the hole at the same time, so there we are. 
so yes you can see on the last one I, I've kind of not caught it properly but I am going to be doing a little bit of hand sewing anyway so that's good upside down with all soft toys they do look better once they've got some stuffing in it and we have a choice we can either sew the head in when it was inside out or we can sew the head round now so but I'm actually going to hand sew the lot uh, just because yeah just because really you know there's um there's a lot to be said and he is looking quite cute So, now um, looking at it, I would be quite happy just to make a bigger head and I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to stop the camera and I'm just going to sew a bigger head and whilst I'm offline, I'm just going to catch my, um, my leg in. So, yes, but he looks really cute. <laughs> Hello, so I've remade my head and I've got it slightly bigger and um, I've actually put a couple of stitches to keep his tail in because I didn't like it and um, he's all done, I know and uh, I can only apologise, I was rushing, I knew I was rushing I haven't got a video for this afternoon so I can only apologise but there we go, I know and I know she'll love him she'll love him because of all his mistakes and um, yeah, such is life. All right, thank you ever so much for watching. My name's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee.